There are three other organelles that I want to talk about now. There are more. The other organelles we're going to save till when we talk about the cell membrane, and we're saving them so that we can really, um, they're basically made of lots of cell, folded cell membrane, and so it, it works better to talk about them in the next lecture. So let's look at um, three organelles that are just floating in your cytoplasm. One of them is this lovely blue, like squiggly, what is that? It's like a jellyfish, like a, like a scallop, like a fantastic maze or labyrinth inside a blue thing. Surely, please know that not all visuals are going to make it blue. Most visuals will make this thing like a round structure with a very folded inner membrane. Ooh. This structure actually has two membranes. It has an inner one that's super folded, and then it has an outer one that makes it kind of like a little bean pod, bean something that's sitting, floating in your soupy cell. This is your mitochondria, mitochondria. Guess what mitochondria do? A whole day on mitochondria structure and function. Mitochondria take glucose and they use the energy in the chemical bonds of glucose to make ATP. What? Yeah. That process is like shockingly fantastic. So take a deep breath because we're going to do that in the, after our first exam. We'll go into great detail. What you want to know now is that, is that the mitochondria is where glucose is metabolized to produce ATP, which we use for energy. We also have um, these little guys. See my little dots? And there's all sorts of different groups of these dots. These guys are ribosomes. And remember who made the ribosome? the nucleolus right down there. And the ribosomes are these tiny little molecular machines, and their job is to build protein. How do they get the instructions for building the protein? Dogs. It comes from the DNA. The DNA has the information in there. Hey, I know how to build that protein. And the ribosome says, dude, send me out those instructions, and I'll hook you up with a protein and then the ribosome builds it. Oh, my gosh, that's a whole day right there. That might be two days of our class talking about how that happens. The last organelle that we have is not found in this here cell. What kind of cell was this? It was a eukaryote, and it was a specific kind of eukaryote. It was an animal cell, and we know that our other cell, isn't an animal cell at all. This, see how boxy this is? It actually has a, let me find where the words are, cell wall. That green thick thing is a cell wall. And the other organelle that I want you to be aware of is this one right here, the round. It almost looks like a mitochondrion, except it's green. And it, it really is green in real life, whether or not your image will show you it in green. Um, there are other characteristics about this organelle that we'll be able to look at and go, oh, that's how it is green and why it is green. And there are some other structural characteristics that identify it for us. But that's a chloroplast. Chloroplasts are found in plant cells. Okay. Yeah. No, I think there are some, yeah, there are totally protists that have chloroplasts. Those would be your category of plant-like single-celled critters single-celled eukaryotes, there are no prokaryotes that have chloroplasts in them. Although, this is crazy, there are some prokaryotes that act like chloroplasts. In fact, they really look like chloroplasts. They have similar um, chemicals inside them that chloroplasts have. <gasps> the plot thickens. Chloroplasts are responsible for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis! Oh, it's the opposite. It's the other half 
of energy production, and it's really amazing. Chloroplasts basically take energy from the sun and trap the energy from the sun in chemical bonds of a glucose molecule. So they take carbon dioxide out of the air using the energy of the sun and build sugar. Seriously? Like that. If nothing else blows your mind in this class, realizing that plants take a gas out of the air and make sugar, my best friend sugar, my best friend sugar that's in my pint of Ben and Jerry's that I can't wait to go yum show last tonight. It's shocking. Chloroplasts are responsible for that. That's it for now. We're going to talk about, as I said multiple times, cell membrane and our endomembrane system. So we're going to talk about more organelles. The last thing I want to talk about in this lecture is the cytoskeleton because that's another important structural component of a cell.